So this is an example of a CT simulator, which we generally use every day uh, to capture the uh, data or the CT simulation scans on which we plan. Generally will be uh, similar to a CT scan, which we do for diagnostic purpose with a small, uh, or a bit little more of the bore, like 85 centimeters. And uh, we generally can be customizing these uh, slices, number of slices, how thick and thin we can get. And also uh, the generation changed with uh, gating capabilities, like we can use scans and also combine it with the respiratory cycles. Like there can be serial scans taken during inspiration and taken during the expiration. So these can be used to see how much the tumor is moving, especially when you are taking for lung or breast. So based on that, we can uh, combinedly take a margin to avoid these geographical misses, which are possible with the IMRT techniques in regular. So as the days evolved, we are now in the age of fusing uh, new imaging modalities into the radiation planning. Initially, it is done with only CT. Now we have MRI, PET CT, and also there are several types of PET CTs like uh, DOPA PET CT, DOTANAC PET CT, and generally what we use is the FDG. So these all help us in different ways to exactly materialize where the tumor is and what are the surrounding non-tumorous or edematous structures which we want to avoid sometimes, thereby decreasing our chance of irradiating unnecessary larger volumes. So MRI, all, you, all of you know that it is superior for soft tissue resolution. And also it has ability to assess neural as well as marrow infiltrations. So we can precisely see uh, the neural structures and also bone marrow, especially in brain, you can see even the minute details of each and every area. So this helps us to plan properly our high dose areas as well as low dose areas. Imaging of metabolic activity through MR spectroscopy. This is one more addition and it is very much helpful in our planning. It can show if you are seeing some enhancing lesion, it can be a uh, cancerous, it cannot be cancerous. So how do you know? A spectroscopy helps us to uh, calculate the values of uh, acetylcholine, NA, and uh, see how much peak of it and the ratio is. Thereby we get to know whether it is a cancerous enhancement or it is some post-operative change or some, uh, some non-cancerous changes. So these are being in, uh, involved in our daily routine nowadays. And this help us a lot in precisely planning our radiation treatment. And one more wonderful thing, which has been evolved through the few years uh, lately is the PET CT scan. That is positron emission to computer tomography, that is PET CT. So what happens in this is, uh, here you can see it is like a positron emission through annihilation process. And these are being captured using the cameras. So what happens unless there is high metabolic activity, you won't see any, uh, any differential activity that is shown on the CT scan or the PET CT scan. Wherever the metabolic rate is high, especially if you take FDG uh, PET CT, which uses the uh, glucose, uh, molecule that is radioactive glucose molecule wherever there is high uptake of uh, glucose generally this happens inside the cancerous cells they they'll be constantly dividing and they take up large amounts of glucose so they get mapped so this radioactive camera can capture them and can show us as uh, golden yellow or something glowing areas and quite different from the rest of the body so this helps us to find even minute uh, metastatic tumors or even small lesions or nodes every, anywhere in the body. So it is very much helpful. And also during planning, we can fuse this to guide us in giving where is the gross tumor, where are the gross nodes and what, whether we are missing any other place in the body. This helps us a lot. So this is how a PET CT scanner is. It is similar to CT scanner, but it has, uh, as the radioactive dye is injected, it, it has a capability of capturing those radioactive images. So this is how a PET CT scan is shown. This is a general uptake inside the body, but here you can see a high enhancing yellow color structure. And this is where uh, there is a large uptake of uh, PET molecules. So this is where the uh, cancerous changes are there and we can uh, target this area.
so i don't think i don't uh, want to go into too much of details of how to make it but uh, definitely there are certain molecules which are used in general nowadays uh, this uh, fluorodeoxy glucose is the most commonly used that is the fdg pet scan and other radio label thymidine fluorum thymidine these are generally used in specific cases especially this uh, 11c methyl methionine or 11c tyrosine and uh, coming to brain we generally use dotanoc for especially uh, certain benign tumors and for uh, prostate we use psma pet ct scan and that is also excellent in uh, delineating only prostate specific uh, tumors so these techniques we can use them in fusing uh, for our radiation plan and that is done through image registration. What happens after acquiring all these diagnostic data and also our planning data, uh, we can fuse them exactly point to point. And uh, also if there is a uh, organ motion, we can utilize the 4D CT uh, to capture the motion also. So this is how it happens. If this is the original MRI, you can see this is enhancing lesion and this is the registered MRI and if this is the PET CT scan taken. So you can see the difference with the MRI and PET. So these two are fused to make a combined data. So on this, based on the higher activity and lower activity enhancement, we can change our radiation plans.